In a previous video, we discussed the idea of entropy and how that relates to solutions. Specifically, we said that two different substances have a tendency to mix when they're put together. However, there are things that go against that tendency. Most importantly is the concept known as intermolecular forces. This is something that you should have learned about in a General Chemistry 1 course or a previous chapter. Intermolecular forces are important when we start looking at the types of interactions between a solute molecule and another solute molecule, or two solvent molecules, or even when we look at the interactions between a solute and a solvent molecule. When we want to make predictions about whether a solution will form between a particular solute and a particular solvent, we need to consider all three of these different kinds of interactions. This means that we'll have to understand the intermolecular forces that are present when we have each of these three different interactions. Once we understand the relative strengths of the intermolecular forces between these different kinds of solute and solvent interactions, we can make some general predictions about whether solutions will form. If solvent-solute interactions are much stronger than either the solvent-solvent or the solute-solute interactions, then it's likely that a solution will form. If the solvent-solute interactions are of about equal magnitude to the solvent-solvent and the solute-solute interactions, we can still predict that a solu solution is likely to form. However, if the solvent-solute interactions are much weaker than the solvent-solvent and solute-solute interactions, we may get a solution to form, or we may not. It will really depend on the relative difference in strengths between these two types of interactions. When we are predicting the relative strengths of these different kinds of interactions, we can make the generalization that like dissolves like. Or put another way, we can say that compounds that have similar types and strengths of intermolecular forces will be more likely to be soluble in each other. Let's see if we can apply what we just learned to an example where we have a particular solute and solvent. In this case, let's imagine an example in which the solute is heptane and the solvent is water. In this case, heptane has a formula C7H16. It's a fairly linear molecule, and we know from our knowledge of intermolecular forces and electronegativity values of carbon and hydrogen that heptane is a nonpolar molecule. When we look at water, we realize that water has hydrogen-oxygen bonds, which indicates that water has a tendency to form hydrogen bonds to other water molecules. Comparing these two different types of intermolecular forces, we see that heptane, as a nonpolar molecule, is likely to have weak dispersion forces. Water has very strong hydrogen bonding intermolecular forces. This means that we look at the solute-solvent interactions, those forces are going to be very weak. However, the dispersion forces between two heptane molecules, intermolecular forces between two water molecules, will be much stronger. Because the solvent-solute interactions are very weak, we would not expect a solution to form between the nonpolar heptane and the very polar hydrogen bonding water. At this point, you should be able to identify the solute and solvent in a solution and predict if they're likely to be miscible or form solutions or be immiscible, not likely to form solutions. You will do this by being able to look at the solute and identify what type of intermolecular forces will be present in the solute-solute interactions. You should be able to look at the solvent and identify which kind of intermolecular forces will be present in the solvent-solvent interactions. And then you can compare these intermolecular forces to see if they're very similar or very different when you're looking at the solute-solvent interactions. Once you've done these three comparisons, you should be able to identify whether a solution will form between a particular solute and a particular solvent.